let's take a few moments and take and look at what we call nuclide symbols. If I'm looking at nuclide symbols, it's because I need to understand something about specific types of atoms. You'll remember that John Dalton talked about all atoms of a given element were identical. Well, that's not true. We see atoms of carbon, for instance, some are slightly heavier. Atoms of hydrogen, some are slightly heavier. But they're both hydrogen, or in the case of carbon, they're both carbon. We're going to look at what are called nuclide symbols to actually identify the difference between the two. We're also going to look at charges on atoms. Up to this point in time, we've said that elements on the periodic table are neutral. That means they have the same number of positives as negatives within the atom. Well, in nature, most atoms don't appear neutral. They appear having a charge, what we call ions. And we can see that also on a nuclide symbol. If I take a look at our standard carbon-12, it's written in this fashion. Carbon being the symbol, 6 being the number of protons, or the atomic number, and 12 being the mass number. Now, those two numbers are important. One's counted, and uh, the other is the summation. So the atomic number, the atomic number is the number of protons in the atom. Now, the periodic table is arranged by number of protons. So element number one, hydrogen, has one proton. Element number two, helium, has two. Lithium, element number three, has three, as we progress on through them. So carbon would have six. Now, any carbon atom will always have six. That's what identifies it as carbon. If it doesn't have six, it isn't carbon. If it's got two, it's helium, not carbon. So in order to be a carbon atom, you have to have six protons. We list that as its atomic number. Now this upper number is a summation. It's the counted number of protons and neutrons. And we call it the mass number. And that word mass number is a counted number. It's not a measured number. If I look at carbon on the periodic table, it's atomic mass. It's reported as 12.011 atomic mass units. Now, you remember that the atomic mass unit is 1 12th the mass of carbon-12 atom. That means it's the average mass of a proton and a neutron. Now, they don't weigh the same. A proton is slightly less massive than a neutron. So the atomic mass unit is defined as a twelfth of a carbon-12 atom because it has the same number of protons and neutrons. Okay, so if I look at the atomic mass of an atom, 12.011, that is compared against a carbon-12 atom, or one twelfth, the mass of a carbon-12 atom. But if I look at the mass number, that is a counted number, not a measured number. This is a decimal because it comes up a comparison against an average, the average of a proton and a neutron. Now it's also a, an average because there, or it's a decimal because there are two different kinds of carbon. We write them carbon-14 this way and carbon-12 that way. We know that they're the same kind of atoms because they both have six protons. If they didn't have the same number of protons, they'd be different elements. But they also vary slightly in their mass. So this number right here becomes an average of the mass of those two atoms. Can you tell which one is more common in nature? Well, if the average is closer to 12 than it is to 14, I can tell there's a lot more 12 in nature than there is 14. Well, carbon-14 is radioactive anyway, and it decomposes, so it would make sense that that's the case. It's generated in our upper atmosphere by interaction with the solar winds, and it doesn't stick around very long. It decomposes. So, based on that, then, we have measured numbers, we call it the atomic mass, and we have counted numbers, the atomic number. The counted numbers are the number of protons, then I have the mass number, which is the counted number of protons and neutrons. And then I have the measured number, which is the average of the mass of all of the atoms that are present of carbon. And it's obviously closer to the carbon-12 atom. 
Now we're going to do a little bit of math here to calculate the number of neutrons that are associated with this uh, symbol that we've just drawn. From our nuclide symbols, can I calculate how many protons, electrons, and neutrons are present? Well, if you look at the number of protons, that one's easy. It's the atomic number. So if I have an atomic number, I can identify the element on the periodic table. Or if I have a nuclide symbol, I can calculate the number of protons from the nuclide symbol. Now, there's another way of writing this. That one's written as carbon-12. This one's written as carbon-14. Two different ways of writing this. The nuclide symbol is more useful for us, but if you're typing it out on the typewriter for a text, it's easier to write it that way. So, from this, the carbon-12 atom, what can I tell? Well, first of all, carbon, I know it's carbon because of the number of protons. So the number of protons indicated by a positive symbol, P plus, is equal to 6. Now that's consistent with both of them. So they're both carbon, because they have 6 protons. But the number of neutrons between them, indicated as an N with a 0, because they don't have any charge, is equal to, well, let's see, 12 minus 6 is also equal to 6. In this example, the number of electrons, you recall we said in a neutral atom, you have to have the same number of positives as negatives, so the electrons, indicated as an E negative, is equal to 6 as well. So I have the same number of positives and negatives. Now let's look at this example. The number of protons, still, with a positive charge, is also equal to 6, same as we had over here. But the mass is different because the number of neutrons is different. So the number of neutrons is equal to 14 minus 6, which is equal to 8. And that's where our extra mass comes from. And the number of electrons is going to be the same as the number of protons if it's neutral. So that's also equal to 6. So I've used my nuclide symbol to calculate protons, neutrons, and electrons. Let's shift gears a little bit and see if we can try some of these on your own. Okay, given the symbol 8838SR, can I identify how many protons, electrons, and neutrons are there? Protons, positive, electrons, negative, and neutrons with no mass. Well, the protons are the easiest one. That's number 38. That's the atomic number. And if it's a neutral atom, the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons. So that's also equal to 38. Now, if the number of protons and electrons were not the same, we would indicate that in the upper right-hand corner. Strontium, for instance, generally isn't found as strontium as an element. It's found as a two-positive charge. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's see. Positive charge, if my net atom has a positive charge, that means I've got more pluses than negatives. Well, how many more pluses? I have two. Where do the pluses come from? They come from the protons. So if that's the case, if I had this symbol, would it still be 38? No. In that instance, that would be 36. Because I have two fewer negatives than positives, and I indicate it this way. Okay, well now how many neutrons do I have? Well, you'll remember that that's a counted number of protons and the neutrons, and that's just a counted number of protons. So I should be able to subtract the bottom one from the top one, and I get the number of neutrons. In this case, 88 minus 38 is equal to 50 neutrons having no charge at all. So I end up with strontium 38, or excuse me, strontium 88 has 50 neutrons. Would that mean that there's possible uh, strontium 87? Yes, if there was an isotope known as strontium 87, it would have 49 neutrons. That symbol would be written this way. SR, if we're assuming it's still a positive ion, 38 still the number of protons. That means these two are isotopes of each other. And uh, 87 would be the specific isotope. So they're both the same atoms because they have the same number of protons, but they have different masses. 
based on the number of neutrons that are present. So given that information then, could I write a nuclide symbol if I just know the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons? And the answer to that is yes. I'm going to start with the number of protons because that identifies the element. So I'm going to put my 53 in the lower right-hand corner. I'm, or excuse me, lower left-hand corner. I'm going to put my symbol up here. And if I go to the periodic table, element number 53 is iodine like this. So I've identified the element from its symbol. Now I'm going to calculate the mass number. You'll recall that the mass number is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons. So if I add those together, I end up with 127. Now to double check that, I can look on the periodic table and see if it makes sense. Yeah, the atomic mass of uh, iodine is close to 127, so it's probably a viable isotope. Now let's check and see if there's a charge on it. I've got 53 positives and 54 negatives. So which one's more common, the positives or the negatives? Well, the negatives are. By how many? Well, 54 minus 53. One more negative. So I end up with my symbol looking like this. It's iodine-127. It has 53 protons. It has one more electron than proton, so it is a charged ion. Okay, using that logic, can I write up a nuclide symbol? For an atom has four protons, five neutrons, and four electrons. Well, let's use the same approach to it. Four protons, lower left-hand side. The summation of four and five is nine. For the mass number, I go to the periodic table, look up element number uh, four. Uh, that's going to end up with beryllium. And it has four electrons. Then I also notice that there's no charge here. So I've been able to identify from that the specific isotope of beryllium that I have indicated here by the number of protons. Okay, let's take a look at a different type of problem. I have three different atoms. It doesn't matter what they are. They've represented their symbol by X. There's no X on the periodic table. So it's an unknown element. Can I identify which of these are the same atoms, same type of atoms? Well, let's see. In order to be isotopes of each other, they have to have the same number of protons. So given these symbols, which have the same number of protons? Is it these two that have 156 on the top? Or is it these two that have 164 on the bottom? Correct answer, that one is an isotope with that one because they have the same number of protons. Do they have the same mass? No, this one is a heavier isotope. So they are the same type of element but not identical atoms. They're isotopes of each other. 